Good morning everyone. So in this video we'll do a little list building or at least talk about it. Um, more specifically is I took yesterday while I was working <laughs> and built some lists and pretty much decided that I want to play at least five games, maybe more depending on how it goes, without a Hell Mall. And it's not because I think the Hell Mall is bad. It's It's more of as I prepare for ETC, you know, we think about what the team needs. Is it something aggressive? Is it a mall? Is it not a mall? And, you know, there's always in the back of my mind people talking to me about, like, what if you didn't take the mall? What if you just went aggro and spent those points elsewhere? And I've said before I'll never probably not take a mall, but um, especially when I'm sitting there making lists at work, or thinking about things, there's always this thing in the back of my mind of, well, what if I dropped it? What could I get? How would it feel? And for a lot of things in this game, excuse me, until you play it and kind of put it on the board and get a feel for like, ooh, that feels good, that doesn't feel good, um, it's really hard to like analyze it just by looking at it. Um, especially some things like, oh, what if I don't have portals? Because I mean, it's hard to think about portals when you just are, you know, they're in your list and you know, you see this 400 points on a mall you spend, and obviously when I, every time I go to a tournament and I come home, I'll tell people, like, that mall is ridiculous because of the things you can do with it. But when you're making a list, it's a different feeling because it's, I don't know. So when you drop it, like, to feel the impact of not having it, you kind of have to play the game without it and say, oh, I kind of miss it or I don't miss it or something like that, right? So to save myself, I guess the idea being, if I play five games without it, and I'm just like, you know what, this sucks. Or it might not suck. So I might just say, this sucks, I miss it, boom. And what it does is it helps me in the future because I invest five games now, but I'm not sitting there making lists that don't have a helm on it. Or I can tell people, like, this is why I don't like playing without one. Um, and it could be for the team event, it could be my own personal play style, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I set out to make a list that I felt was pretty good, along with some help from others, um, it didn't have a helm on it. It just was like, all right, we're not going to take a helm all, and if you don't take a helm all, I think you got to take some speed in your army. Um, you got to go fast. You have to take the big boys. Because um, otherwise, if you're going to take guys that walk around, it just doesn't seem why. Like, that's not the purpose of it. Like, you don't want to... If you take them all to teleport, like, infantry around, that works really well, but, you know, if you're a bunch of move five chaos warriors for, or chosen and move four warriors without a maw, just, I think it would feel pretty bad, um, in general. Um, so yeah, so I have an example of a list we'll go over that was crafted yesterday. Um, it'll look like it has pieces of things I've seen in the past or in the future, or I mean in the present, like in lists I've seen online. Um, I guess we could start with that. So, where's the list? There's the list. So here's the list. Um, so we'll just start at the top. It has a herald. It has an ancestor. With a great, it has a great open because I had ten points, and I figured it would be one of the first things I drop if I found something else I wanted. But your strength nine. AP six, so pretty much, so no one gets saves versus you. So essentially, it takes away saves. So if you think about it, versus like a one-up rollable save hero, one of the rollable saves is um, uh, what chance of failing it one third, one third, or um, chance of passing it is one third, chance of failing it four nine, two thirds, two thirds from my side. So it's only a four ninth chance to get through a one-up rollable save. So like it's like a 50-50 almost. So this eliminates that. Um, he's only AG3, so maybe... I mean, there's things where you're facing other great weapons and you're going to go at the same time, and it kind of sucks. Um, so, I mean, it can be dropped easily. I don't know why I'm explaining it too much. But it's also nice for us, like, the res 6 and above things where you're wounding on 2s, like you're wounding a great green idol on 3s. Like, it actually is funny because there's a lot of things in the Chaos Army that aren't very good versus the Great Green Idol, because you just can't wound it when you don't have enough attacks, and this guy is actually pretty good versus it. So. Um, and he's scary for one-up save heroes, because you're just like, no save. You know, wounding a dragon. On. He needs threes and twos with re-rolls on the hits against the dragon. Like, he kills a dragon the same as he kills a goblin. So, 
anyway, that's the idea there, and I had 10 points. Um, so as a Sorcerer Master, okay, so one reason behind the Herald, because I had ideas from other people where, like, you could take a, because you want monsters and you want big things at least, you could take a, a cultism guy on a dragon or on a, well, dragon kind of useless if you have the ancestor, so we'll say that that's why that didn't happen, or a behemoth. And the behemoth is, you know, you could take the 20-inch move, and now you have this occultism guy on a big-ass monster that moves 20 and can heal himself, and he has seven wounds. And he's like 950 points, and you get like five spells and all this crap. And it's not bad. It's a big base. Um, I think it definitely has merit. Uh, but when you think about it, maybe like compared to the Herald, where you're just like, all right, you're a little bit, you know, for 170 points less, you get a worse caster, because the Herald's worse at casting. And yes, the big boy has 6 strength 6, and then you have the paired weapon, the Hero's Heart, 5 strength 5, but the Herald, 6 strength 6 as well, with higher weapon skill and defense. He comes with a ward save, so, you know, 7 wounds with a 4-up armor, if you take the move 20 thing, versus four, 5 wounds with a 4-up armor and a 4-up ward, and they're both healable, but the Herald has more healable choices. It's also the base size, where it's just like, you're not getting screwed by like having this 150 by 100 base or 100 by 150 base. And he's on a 50, 50, so it's easier to hide and like clip things. And so, and also like the Herald um, attribute is a lot more useful because you can give div to all the Feldrakes in your army. Um, so there were some reasons that to take him over the uh, mage. And it's also one of those things like, one thing that's kind of nice is I take stomps a lot on my Herald when I took him before. And I still will take it because it gives you stubborn and terror and stuff. But in a list like this, it's less like if the enemy's bad against stomps, you already have three guys that stomp hard. So you can you can get away with taking other things like Veilwalker if needed or the strength thing. Um, so that's the reasoning there. It's just, you know, these two characters together, the Herald and the Sorcerer, are more points than the cultism guy, but the magic's better, and it's less of a risk of that. Yeah, because what did I? Have? I only had, I didn't have any other character before. I just had the cultism guy. So this has seven spells that had five spells, and even if you think about it <clears throat> from the point of an adept, you know, a two hundred twenty point adept plus the herald is one thousand forty, which is about sixty less than that guy. You still get five spells, but they come from different lores, and it just it's close. But I think with the base size and the guiding light, the Herald is probably the better choice to have. Um, so that's the character set. Oh, yeah, I have an Evo Mage. Um, he only has Veil Get Orb. Again, I had 10 extra points. I put it in. Um, he doesn't have Veil Walker. I've talked about before how I am curious about the evocation. Um, right? And so we've talked about the thought process behind this. And I'll, I'll just redo it for anyone who did listen to the other video. So essentially you have a Herald and you have um, an Evo guy. So if the and, and I don't have Veilwalker because I I don't think it's protect. If I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it on the Herald probably because the Herald can get Graves calls. I mean, if you look at like right, if you look at what spells here really need, so they could all use range potentially, but they're not that short of range. Like 24, 18, 24, 18, 24. This is short range. And then if you take Hellfire on your... Because you're probably going to take Hellfire on your Herald more because he's faster and he's going to be out there. So if he's not your main caster, and when I say main caster, I'm meaning like he doesn't have all your spells. He's not like the Hellfire caster. Then I don't think he needs Veilwalker because really the only spell that reroll to wounds matter is this one. So if he's... Basically I'm saying if he's not taking Veilwalker or Hellfire, you don't need reroll to wound because it's only good on this spell. You don't need armor save, reroll armor saves because none of these involve armor saves. And you and range is nice, but is it a hundred points nice to get extra range? Probably not because it's a hundred points plus you're spending veil tokens. Um, and so the idea is you have this Evo and a cult, and it might not work. <laughs> I've never played the Evo Mage. The idea is. You know, what do people take Evo for a lot in the cult? They take it for the double snipes. We've talked about this before. Double, triple snipes, actually. But then they say, well, one, you know, and people say, well, Evo's going downhill. People aren't using it as much because double snipes 
people are taking MR4 on character so much that it just doesn't feel as good. And I'm saying that's true, but there are lists out there that hate playing against snipes. So if you play a list that hates against snipes, you take Haste in the Hour, you take Touch the Reaper, and you take Veilwalker on your fucking big boy, and you take Mark for Doom on him, right? Because your big guy could be Mark for Doom Grave Calls Hellfire if you really needed to. Um, and he can move 16 inches, so there's a lot better chance that he gets within this 12 inches and can, you know, kill a guy or do a better um, snipe on him. And that's where we rolled a wound really ni is nice because this I mean it's both it's nice on both spells but if you're only going to have it on one it's both it's nice for both um but like I said 24 inches focus missile do you really need 30 inches on it it's not bad but it can be done without it also so then if you face an army that isn't good against snipes right or is good against snipes like they have MR4 and not going to snipe things then you just take like the buffs, right? You use this to kill champions. If you if they have champions you need to kill, you take Ace in the Hour. And you just kill, you know, you, you try to pop a champion um, only because you have a Herald and, you know, a Feldrake L Ancestor you don't want to get caught by champions, which is actually a big deal. If they have big monsters, you know, Touch of the Reaper on a 7 plus for D3 strength 10 is, is not bad, but you also have him, who, if you know, if, you, if they have a lot of monsters, you're going to take Veilwalker and your Herald, and you're going to bomb them with Grave Calls, Mark for Doom, and stuff like that. Think if you're facing a fairly defensive army, and your magic phase might be, I don't know, you're sniping them, and then your Herald's casting Comet or something, because you have that option. So I'm curious how the magic phase goes. The one thing when you take small units like I have, or they're not small necessarily, but they are, you know, um, let me find my list. So here, you know, there's nothing here. The problem with buffs in this case is that you can only buff like six attacks at a time. Now it's pretty nice still when you're rerolling to hit, you know, or rerolling even rerolling the wound can be good if the character is not like T five or above. You have so much strength six that it's like. Rerolling twos to wound is not... Well, actually, it's good on stomps, too. The fact that Evo does affect stomps. Um, but, I mean, to be fair, alchemy wouldn't be as much better, right? You can only armor save one unit at a time, which is still good because armor saving of Feldrick Elder to 1 plus is really nice. Minus 1 armor is good. and the, You know, uh, alchemy has its own advantages. But in the world of buffing, like having a big unit to buff, you get more value out of your spell, right? If you hit something with four monsters versus a big unit that, you know, then every buff is worth more because you're buffing the whole unit instead of one of the four monsters. Of course, there's other math there. Um, this Whispers of the Veil is nice because it is a debuff. So if you have, you know, Chariots charging and Elders charging and their T5 and you just drop them one, everybody starts wounding better. Um, and obviously the Alliance one discipline helps. So Whispers of the Veil is a very nice spell for this army as well. So, you know, Think of your magic phase. It could be Spectral Blades, Whispers of the Veil, Ancestral Aid, Touch of the Reaper, or Hasten, depending on which one you want. And then, you know, if you needed offensive magic, you could have Mark for Doom, Grave Calls, Hellfire, or Pentagram, Grave Calls, Hellfire, or any sort of offensive spells on your Herald. You don't, if you don't need Grave Calls, Mark for Doom, Hellfire, Pentagram, and Rot is still pretty good. Um... So you have a nice mix of seven spells without being tied to, like, like we've talked about the double masters, right? Where, you, where people take two masters and it costs, like, a million points. Like, it's still, I'm spending a lot of points on it. It's uh, 1,200 points on my two casters, but, like, the, the Herald does other, th does other things and fights and stuff and so I, that's the idea behind it. Obviously, Evo is nice if you do for the tokens if you are veil walkering thing. So you know you get it because a lot of people let the Evo stuff. Like if you're getting bombed by Grave Calls and Hellfire, they're probably going to let the Evo stuff go. And there's times where you would take Hellfire and this guy just for the plus one to wound uh, or plus one to cast. If you're not playing Veil Walker on your Herald. Then you may take Hellfire. You know, you might take, if you don't need either snipe, you might take Ancestral Aid, Whisper, Spectral Blades, Hellfire, and then your big guy's taking um, Comet, Pentagram, and Rot or something. But that's not the point. Um, 
it's just a nice selection of spells. I'd be curious how it how it pans out because I played with occultism, and the fact that you couldn't get any good buffs was really annoying when you played occultism and uh, the herald. It felt like I couldn't get any good buffs, and that was a little bit annoying. Whereas now you can still get the big money damage spells, but you can also have buffs to back it up if you need to. So that's that's the idea there. Um, let's go back to the list. So that's the character setup. That's why the Vage doesn't have Veil Walker. That's why he's like cheap and stuff. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need an extra spell. All that good stuff. So the core I straight up stole from the Spanish list. And the Spanish has been doing this. As you can see, there's no musicians to save on 60 points because if you put in 60 points, there's, everything's min size that can be in core. Warhounds obviously have to be 8 to be in core. So there's really... And without the portal, so one thing that's funny about the portal is it really does, in a sense, force you to buy musicians because it's a lot easier to get in a portal if you can reform and move than it is if you can just, you know, push two inches to the left and right or backwards. It gives you basically four more, two more inches of movement plus a little bit of leeway with the reform. Since you can't reform onto a portal, you have to swift reform because you have to end an advance or a march and not a reform. So without portals, you have a little bit more freedom to not take musicians. And, you know, if you talk to the Spains, why they don't take a lot of musicians is like they essentially they say if you're really good in the movement phase and you know where a unit's going to be, you don't really need a musician or you shouldn't need one as much now. It is nice for units to get out of line of sight, but to be fair, units like f move four warriors, it's pretty easy to make sure they can't like reform out of your line of sight. I do think things like Feldrakes, which remove eight, um, it's much more difficult if you think about the space required to get something out of your line of sight. All right, if you think about a unit sitting in front of warriors. Most of the time, all you have to be is like two inches away, and then they can't reform out of your line of sight. So the musician is essentially useless in that case, in a way. Whereas Feldrakes, who move seven, have a lot more leeway to move laterally when they reform. So the enemy has to be farther back. So so it, it, that's the kind of the reason where musicians probably get more value out of faster units than, say... 10 warriors. Now, obviously, it has other uses when you come to big blocks and, like, big blocks of stuff that don't, because it I have the freedom of, to move left and right and stuff. But for 10-man packs, I can see where it's just like, okay, whatever. I don't need it. Um, so it's, the core is meant to be exactly what you see. It's it's three scoring. Um, one is just barbarians, which either holds the mage or just scores. And two redirectors. You're getting all your points of redirectors and scoring in your core um lust so you can flee because it's just annoying for people um i mean everything almost half pretty much everything in this army can flee but three models your herald and your two chariots can't flee everything else can flee and lust do it well because they flee and then they rally on three dice and can move again so it's it's kind of annoying for like i get this army in flags like you just kind of chill back with your warriors and kill everything else with your big things um, flee if needed, so they can't be. It's not as easy to catch them. Stuff like that. Um, hey, there's not much to say about the core. You got your hounds, and then you have your all your points are in little units that can either help you out, like maybe a flanking or killing. You know, because they can still kill fast cav and stuff. Or they're just used to score. And you know, I talked about in my masters list where my scoring was a giant greed unit, three fell drakes, and six knights, and it felt kind of bad because. Somebody has to go stand by the secure target, right? Somebody has to stand in the middle, which is not the biggest deal. Somebody has to walk across the board for breakthrough. And this one is actually a little bit harder for breakthrough because you have three slow scoring. But if you're walking behind all the beef, you can probably get up there in six turns. The point being is you don't care. If you win breakthrough because your ten warriors walk up the board and do nothing, you're happy. If you win breakthrough because, like, your knights do nothing and walk up the board, you're a little less happy because they're, like, 400 points. and they were a big part of your army. And when your Helmaw is 380, which, again, I'm not saying Helmaw is bad. I'm just playing devil's advocate. When your Helmaw is 380 points, 
then you're you know that's a 700 800 points of your army that's not fighting for you to help you right so that that's that's part of the the reasoning people say behind the helm wall is it's really good i'm i'm trying to play devil's advocate so don't take my criticism as hard as it sounds is, well, if you don't have Helmwall, that's 400 more points of fighting you have. It's kind of like this idea where I said I played against Dark Elves, a combat Dark Elf list, and it didn't have any shooting, and I was very excited to play it because it didn't have any bolt throwers or repeaters, and I was like, oh yeah, I can't get shot, and then I realized, eh, he has 500, 600 more points of, sh of combat because of this, and the shooting actually does less than me than 600 points of combat, right? So there's a point where I hate playing and shooting, but when you invest in shooting, you have less to fight with. And so when I had, <laughs> we went over that in the other video. So that's the core setup. That's the reasoning behind it. Um, so we get the special. Obviously, the special and legendary beast, there's not a whole lot of, you know, it's two Feldrake Elders because the idea behind this list is three big Feldrakes, um, Feldrax, whatever you call them. Feldrax. Um, so the baby Feldrax, I do have a musician on them. I do think it's droppable. I do think it's better on them than the other stuff. Um, but I do think it is droppable if you really want to try to put 20 points somewhere. You probably have 40 points in this list in the Great Weapon, Belgate Orb, and the musician here to kind of put where you want because you really can't cut anything else. Um, maybe you could drop a Feldrax Elder Weapon to a Great Weapon, which has its own uses, to be fair. Um, anyway, now you have three Veldrakes, so reason behind them. So now you have a fast scoring unit. It's nice to have a, a fourth scoring unit. It's fast. It's it's cheap enough that it's you're not going to feel too bad if it if it has to do a job somewhere like hold a secure or pick up a spoils or something like that. But at the same time, it can block for your herald. So it's a unit that's big enough to your herald can stand behind it for shooting purposes, though he could stand behind the ancestors and the elders if, if truly needed. Um, it's just a tough unit, 12 toughest 5 wounds for 365 points. Uh, it could be a cheap night bus, but then you can't block your herald. It does fall into the trap of, you have to be a little careful, uh, panic for ancestors and elders, like they can panic each other, so every unit you get past the first one starts to become a liability, in a sense, um, you just have to keep track of it. I mean, obviously, they don't, like, the big ones can't panic themselves. Like, they have to die. You have to know it's going to be shot down or charred. But it's just something to consider. And that's another reason you take the Herald, right? Instead of, like, the other guy, the other exalted, uh, the mage on the thing. Because you, you want the, you want the damn guiding light sometimes. You just want to throw it on the elder that's fighting and, He's stubborn on leadership nine, so um, at least you, unlike the giant Feldrake units, you kind of get around that by having single models that don't take terror checks and don't really panic from wounds at all. So the only panic checks you're going to take in this army, besides the Feldrakes um, taking a couple wounds, is them panicking each other. The elders, that is, and the ancestor. So, and that's something you have to see on the board. Um, two chariots. It's 460 points. They're could it be something else? It could. Um, it's nice to have little units that kind of charge and be annoying. And um, chariots aren't as fast as the elders and stuff, but if you, they kind of can hold like the center and charge with things and clip and do enough wounds to be annoying um, for two hundred thirty points. I've played with them before and they were solid. Uh, and then two elders with paired weapons, so it's hard to complain too much about those. So, you know, here we are, we have this, this build, and the first thing that pops to my mind is, oh, you know, one of those, and I've said this before, one of those chariots for 50 points can become a Helmaw, because I have the, the beast points to put a naked Helmaw in. And so, let's, for argument's sake, how would we turn this into a Helmaw list? Uh, copy the list. So this is the list and you could say, alright, well I drop this and you would take this and you make it a great weapon and say, alright, well one of my elders is going to be strength 8, 5 strength 8. Um, you take this and you kind of say, well the purpose of the elder being strength 8 is kind of like the purpose of him being strength that and then you drop musician because you say, fuck musicians we're, we're Spanish now. And you drop Vilgate Orb and then you 
you have the points for them all. Right? So you could say, all right, this could be the list. Where you only drop some peripherals and you got a maul instead of a chariot. And so, which actually, to be fair, in looking at it now, it is not the worst idea I've ever seen. Um, and that's happens when you make lists. You're like, oh, can I change this and this? So it's it's a bit it's a monster, it's a terror causer, it's not as fast as a chariot. We've been through all this before, guys. It's five string five, blah blah blah. What does it give you? It gives you you have a herald that can teleport, you have two units of warriors, you have a Feldrix, and you have a chariot. So it gives you a little bit more and the barbarians technically can do it. They'll take some wounds, but they could do it. It gives you a little bit more scenario control because just because you can teleport late game with your warriors. Like, you don't have to worry about running your warriors up the board as much. You could set up portals early game and then tele. you know. By turn three, one, two. Turn three, you could teleport a warrior unit across the board into the enemy deployment zone instead of walking for four turns to get across there. So it has um, uses there. And that's pretty much it. That's its use. I mean, its use is... You take 300 points, you turn, and you, you're a monster. So, like, the point being is you have other monsters in this list, and people are not going to focus on the 280 point naked helm wall. If you flank charge somebody with it, I've said it's a rank, it's every, you know, it's a lot of things that Chariot has in its own right, just different. Um, and then if you so happen to make it to the late game where it teleports a unit across the board, perfect. Or it saves a unit, like, it saves your herald, like, You'd have to. This is the type of list I'd also like to try. Like it might evolve that where I play. I'm going to play without the Helm Wall just to see what it feels like. And then I might say, well, I don't like not having the Helm Wall. Let's make a list with the Helm Wall, a naked Helm Wall, and then some aggressiveness around it. So it might evolve where it kind of comes into this happy medium, and it might come back where I say, well, I want the third portal or the first portal and stuff. So, um, this was the army to start with, where you just see... Because you, if you don't play with any portals, you might say, Ooh, I could really use one. And then you play with a, hell, a naked Helm Maw. And that could be the one where you're like, Man, I can still get this super aggressive army. And, you know, things might change. Because, to be fair, you don't need the Elder in this list. Like, you don't need... Or Ancestor, you don't need him for this point cap or anything. I think if you drop him, you still have enough to get the naked Helm Maw in. Um... So, some, another consideration is, you saw that guy with 660 points. So, this is a little bit of list building right now. You could say, I have a Doom Lord, and then he was 660. So, what can you get for 660, essentially? And you don't have to spend all your points. I mean, you could get this guy. And you can either do Paired Weapons. You can do Shield Breaker. It's not horrible on him. Because the problem with the Great Weapon on him is... You're spending 40 points for plus 2 strength. But sure, it's great, but the reason that the Great Weapon's so priced so high is because he can use a shield. So if you're on a Wasteland Behemoth, you're paying the tax for him being able to use a shield and a Great Weapon, but you're not getting the, the use of the shield because he's on a Behemoth. So I think these two are almost overpriced because of that. So for, you know, here. Like this, like for the Great Weapon, you can get this and, I don't know, Kingslayer. For 15 points more, and, you know, you're 5 strength 5, but against any characters you're more. And it might just be, in this particular case, you go, Shieldbreaker's not bad on him, because you have 6 strength 5 with no armor save, which is something the army doesn't have. So let's just say you went with this, and then you're going to take Obsidian Rock. So, if you look at it this way, you are 10 points, your points, the same points as the Herald, the Ancestor, without, um, without, the uh, the great weapon, right? So, this was a, a kind of a thought I had the other day, if you think about this. So, you think about that big boy. How many points in... You could still fit the maw, a naked maw, if you really wanted. And this guy could actually be less points. Oops. If you wanted to fit in the maw, you could just drop this guy to be less points. And you could easily, more easily change the warrior chariot into the maw. Um... That being said, so let's let's look at the stats real quick because this was a, a thought I had the other day. So, um, 
So you have an ancestor, he's move 8, discipline 9, yeah, he has the breath weapon if he needs it, patriot gets fly, you can't fly when you have him, so he does make the herald not be able to fly, though I don't think that's as big of a deal. Um, that doesn't matter in this particular list, and I didn't take any of these. So if you just look, we're looking at raw stats here, so let's take it one step at a time. First off, base, he's 75 by 100, while the mount is 100 by 150, so the base is much larger. Um, at least it's... Yeah, it, it's pretty much, it's a lot bigger. So that's an issue, we'll say, to start with. It's just a bigger base. Um, movement. We'll focus on the behemoth because we know what the elder stats are. So you're getting one less inch. So you're 714 versus 816. So there you go. You're getting one less wound, three less defense. So right off the bat, you're easier to hit. You have one less wound. You have the same res and the same armor. Now, you can make an argument that if you ever use your breath weapon on the Ancestor, you automatically lose a wound, so it, to even utilize the breath weapon, you have to be... You're the same HP as this guy. So, that's fair. And he's easier to hit. Six versus three, sure. It is easier. No, no doubt there. Um, you just gotta handle that. So, you know, what are the pros and the cons? So, the Ancestor is six... Offensive, 6, Strength, 7. Alright, so you get 6 attack, Strength, 7. If you think about it, the other guy is 6, Strength, 6. So, alright, so you get 6 attacks. Offense, 3 versus Offense, 6 is a big difference. You're going to hit most things on 4s. Some characters on 5s, even. Um, but, you have the Doom Lord sitting on top, who is um, 6, Strength, 5 AP 10 or you can you can always change this build I mean in theory if you look at the list you could go you could go great weapon you could go I guess the and he's MR so that's another thing he's MR, for the same points you get MR2 but you could go any weapon combination for 40 points you could go great weapon he's 5 strength 7 so if you think of the great weapon version where you, even though we know we're overpaying on the great weapon in a sense you're getting 5 strength 7 at, at weapon skill 7, which is better than the Elder has 5. Okay, so the Elder has 6 strength 7. You get 5 strength 7, and on top of that, you get 6 strength 6. So there's way more attacks coming from this model. It has a little bit worse defense, a little bit slower, bigger base. And then I think the thing that's kind of hard to measure the value of, and it might even be the fuck the Ancestor in that case, is... He's he can flee, the other one can't. The other two value is he doesn't get re-rollable innate break checks. The other guy does, so you don't have to cast the um fucking div spell on him as much. He doesn't call get panicked by other elders. He doesn't panic other elders, so you're taking away one of those four units that panic each other. Um and the cool thing about the the Doom Lord one is if as somebody ever breaks him. Uh, he gets to do all his attacks um, before he dies. So he could, if he does happen to break, he could just kill something with thing. Now, of course, he could be just killed straight up. But I mean, like I said, you have a lot of things to kill in this list. When you compare him directly to an ancestor, though, it's very close. Like it's very much like because what is this guy getting you? He brings up the cap. But the 10% more he gets you than what you already have, he spends on himself, right? So the Wasteland Behemoth version, the Doom Lord, the Behemoth's only like 200-something. So this 400 points, you know, it's basically this, it's a trade. Like, he's worth 400 more points in the monster section. So if you think about that, um, you also get um, items on your, where's my list? You also get items you can choose from, you know, you don't have to do Shield Breaker, which even might, you know, it might be best to go the, uh, I mean, Halberd might just, you know, Great Weapon might just be the best one. Though, for this equal points, it's about, it's close, the math is close on these two. The fact that he's better against one-up saves than Great Weapon is. Now, the Great Weapon's better against other things. You have rerolled a wound on your guy. There's there's ups and downs to both. He's a better model to buff with, with Evo Magic because of the uh, 
because he has more attacks than one model, so like reroll to hit or reroll to wound is really good on him. Um, he could also, if you really wanted some sort of item here, you could go whatever it would be. He could also get trophy rack if you want. So there are some benefits to I mean, I mean, just without playing it, I'm going to try the other version first, the, uh, the Ancestor, but I could definitely see the Doom Lord on Behemoth just being the better option for the same points. Right? Yeah. And if you really want to be a baller, you could do this. I'm already messing up my list, but you guys can see how I think sometimes. How many points is he if he's naked? If he's nothing. Look at that. You still have 20 points left. Now this is no items. This is no items. It's just paired weapons. So like, you only have 20 points left. Or uh, 30 points left. You have 30 points left and basically no items on your fucking characters. But you get the same. And you look, you're right here. You still have four monsters. <clears throat> you still have decent magic. I don't like this version, to be fair. I'd rather rather do what I had before. <clears throat> that being said, you know, you could do this. I do. You, <laughs> damn it, he's the same point. Like you could do the same thing where you drop all the shit and get the... Because uh, like now, in this case, it's actually pretty cool to have the gray weapon. And you drop this. Like, like You saw what I did before. I have the, you, you can put them all in. But, so that's an actual consideration when making this. Is this guy better than a elder or ancestor? Slightly slower. He's a little bit less defensive because he's seven wounds four up with worse defense. But he's a lot more offensive in that. And he has, but he has obsidian rock. Though there's not many spells the ancestor cares about. And he's a little, and so alchemy magic starts to take a turn because it's better versus this guy, even though he's obsidian rock and blah 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 blah. blah. We, we get it. And on the flip side, you get six strength six plus six strength five AP ten in this particular case. So the ancestor can kill one of save heroes just the same as this guy can. In fact, they're both the ancestor's better at it in its own way. Um, but he has more attacks to fight off little units with. Like he just comes with more attacks, so. It's, and it's basically the same shit. It's like, do you want the big base? And uh, to be fair, the, probably the, the the key point between this guy and the... Uh, is that he can't panic the Elders or the Feldric. So you're one less unit that you have to worry about panicking each other. And he gets innate reroll break checks. Um, which is really nice. So you don't have to spend your damn guiding light on him. You can spend on something else. So there is... I say there is an argument for this type of list to be had versus the other one. Of course, the big base plays a big part too because it becomes a lot bigger but just something to consider as another option as you look in these type of lists um, but i think i want to start with the version that i showed initially because little things like you'll you like until you get a list on the board i can make changes all day i can think oh i'm gonna put in a doom lord and then i'm gonna change this chariot for a helm and blah 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 but until you play it a couple games and say, wow, I like this, I didn't like this, you know, this didn't feel good, then you kind of get a feel for what the list needs and what it doesn't need and what it can beat. And so sitting there all day and making 300 lists doesn't do much until you put it on the board. How the hell did this guy get in here? He must, how do you, he guessed my password? Do I have a password? High spear. He must have guessed my password. I mean, it's a simple password, to be fair. But, so this is what the list looks like on the board. Lots of beef, lots of speed. I don't know how to deploy it. But boom, boom, boom. Real quick. But, yep. So, my goal, like I said, is to play this for a couple games. See how it works. See if it's a style. See if it maybe merges into this. I could see it going to a naked mall, and then you have to merge some other things and say, well, if you take the naked mall, <clears throat> do you need more things that can portal? But, you know, it could go into this whole, like, where this, this guy, this 650 points you have sitting around, becomes something else. Becomes some other fighty hero that can portal, like a Chaos Lord or something. 
Um, but then you're dropping a lot of the big monsters. So it, the, the list is dynamic in that it changes. Like if you just took this and this and this became, I don't know, knights or something, probably that's probably not a good change. But you know, you get what I'm saying. Like it takes time to evolve the list. But I think the one, well, now I've ruined my own list. So the one I had <clears throat> originally is what I want to try. Oh, yeah, my general is also the herald for now. But I could see it being the mage. So that if you lose this, it doesn't matter. But then it makes the mage a big target. Because at 380, he's not actually that expensive. What am I missing in this list? Oh, this was, this should go back to paired with. So this is the original list that I want to try. And I'll probably try tomorrow versus Travis. And then we'll go from there. And then I just want to let people know that my thought process behind no malls and that I'm going to try and maybe I'll have a video after uh, afterwards to see how it goes. Um, thanks for listening.